I'm only human. How many of us have ever heard or said this phrase before? Do we think about what this phrase is actually saying? You know, as a noun, the word human is a human being, especially someone who is distinguished from an animal, or in science fiction, an alien. This phrase gives us room to be patient with ourselves as we acknowledge that as humans, we're still whole and valuable, even in our unfortunate situations. Today, join me in a journey as I walk through the three underlying truths of HIV in our black and brown communities. Now, I'm a guy who forgets a whole lot. No, honestly, I know you're probably at home thinking to yourself, how is this guy giving a TEDx talk if he forgets so much? And trust me, if I told you about all my forgetful adventures, you'd probably fall off your seat laughing at home. But if you're like me, a guy who forgets a lot, I try to remember the three underlying truths of HIV by putting them in an acronym, S-M-H. Now, I already know what you're thinking. Shaking my head, right? All right, well, you're close. All right, not really. The SMH stands for Stigma, Minority Stress, and Health Disparities. And it's important that everyone knows about this acronym because HIV is not just an issue for some people. It's your issue. It's the community's issue. It's the world's issue. And while this is an issue that we've been combating for years on end, HIV still is not as black and white as we all hope it would be. Many times, HIV is mistakenly thought to be interchangeable with AIDS, which is far from the truth, so today we're going to comb through some of that together. The first letter in HIV stands for human. Human. Human immunodeficiency virus. This virus compromises one's immune system while interfering with the body's ability to fight off organisms that cause disease. AIDS, or acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, is the most advanced stage of HIV that leaves the body vulnerable for life-threatening infections. Now, I know this sounds confusing, trust me, because I've been there before, but try thinking of it like this. Without being in care and adhering to your medication, HIV can progress to AIDS. And as it's important to know the difference between the two, it's just as important to know about the data behind it and how it's affecting our communities that we live in. In the state of Wisconsin, one in three or 35% of black gay men are estimated to be living with HIV in their lifetime, compared to 10% of gay Latino men and 4% of the white counterparts. This trend of black gay men being disproportionately affected goes all the way back to the beginning of the AIDS epidemic. And according to the Wisconsin HIV Surveillance Annual Report, during 2019, ethnic and racial minority groups made up just 18% of the state's population, while accounting for 68% of new HIV diagnosis. But why is that? Black men know what HIV is. <laughs> we know what condoms are. We've been conditioned to look at this data and hold it at its face value instead of thinking of the data as if it's a as if it's an onion with multiple layers of findings that give us a true scope into how to really truly alleviate the problem. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not bashing data. We need data. It's our starting point. But I think it's imperative that we pull back those layers to truly identify and capture the why. So let's lean forward a little bit. How do you define the disapproval or discrimination against someone based on their sexuality or the characteristics? The first word that comes to my mind out of many is homophobia, because we see it every day. But this is not the word I'm looking for. Second word that comes to my mind is racism, the suppression and oppression of a people from generation to generation. And as that word is important to know and understand, that's still not the word I'm looking for. The word less described and that best fits this description is stigma, also known as the silent killer. See, stigma serves actively throughout our everyday ways of life. It's the stain of ignorance that includes two other components, prejudice and treating others in ways that disadvantage the already stigmatized person. And the part that is the most important to remember in respects to this conversation is the fact that many health conditions are associated with stigma, including HIV. Stigma creates pathways to unfavorable social conditions, HIV transmission and health consequences for same-gender-loving men of color. 
A stigma fuels discrimination that creates unfavorable social conditions. And when an individual is faced with these unfavorable social conditions, that increases the risk of risky behavior, which then in turn increases the risk of HIV transmission. For example, due to stigma and anti-gay discrimination, many same gender loving men of color hold negative internalized ideas and expressions about their sexuality due to their family and or friends. We call this internalized homophobia. Being that these men have been conditioned to view HIV in such a stigmatizing way, they may not feel safe or comfortable having conversations about safe sex and getting tested with their partners. Thus, increasing the chance of HIV transmission. So picture it. Living in a world where you combat society's ideology in which you are not normal. And often treated differently because you have the audacity to be, well, you. What internal discomfort would you bring on to yourself? Would you be able to grow and prosper and thrive to your fullest capacity? This is the example of millions of people in our country today and is best measured by the minority stress model. This model by Dr. Ian Meyer proposes that sexual minority health disparities can be best explained in large part by stressors caused by a hostile and homophobic culture, which then can lead to a lifetime full of maltreatment, harassment, discrimination, and victimization. Now, stress is an inevitable feeling that we have throughout our lives. At one point in our lives or another, we look for that new job or look to move our family into that new house. Some of us have babies, while the others, we have puppies. This is Dahlia. This is my baby. And she's adorable, but she also could be very stressful. These are all examples of positive stressors that we encounter all the time throughout our everyday ways of life. But we also encounter negative stress, also known as distress, throughout our lives as well. And while my Dahlia here is adorable as a positive stressor, I'm pretty sure we don't look at our car breaking down or a recent death in the family and think to ourselves, oh, that's adorable. So try to think about how stress can look for someone who looks differently than you, not as able as you, or even love differently than you. Think of your everyday stressors. Now imagine a lifetime of a burden of stress added to that balance due to your sexual identity. Imagine going to the doctor and bearing the embarrassment because they automatically assume outcomes due to who you love. Imagine inquiring about safer sex practices and getting that gut-riching feeling when they mistake your sexual identity. Or imagine wanting to try out for the football team and not doing so because you're scared of the ridicule and judgment that will come behind it. Those are the experiences of millions of people around the world. But when I get to peeling that onion, I start asking myself important questions, one of them being, I wonder what gateways this opens for same gender loving men of color. What disparities does minority stress produce for same gender loving men of color? Health disparities are differences that are preventable in respect to the burden of different diseases. You know, we hear of these disparities all the time. Black women having the highest infant mortality rates in the country or African Americans having the highest rate of diabetes in the country. These differences range from opportunities for primary health to access of resources for disadvantaged populations. When assessing this more, we see how this could ultimately impact one's access to medical care due to medical mistrust and other factors. And throughout the history of our country, it's no secret that people of color have been oppressed and suppressed in many different ways systematically. Now imagine how that is for someone who is of color and identifies as gay, bisexual, or queer. That's two strikes. And in 2017, a sample of U.S. adults found that LGBT people of color were twice as likely to report discrimination based on their identity when applying for jobs and when encountering the police. Now this may seem intolerable to the ear because these are people's lives we're talking about. Real, actual lives. And as a way to alleviate this factor, many people rely on their close relationships where they find love and comfort. How many of us find love and comfort and voice of reason within our families? Okay, friends, religious institutions. Now, what if I told you these same places where you found love, support, and guidance were the very places where you face exile, 
ridicule, and judgment. In so many homes around this country, there are millions of young gay men, especially of color, who face this treatment. The society's norms that we've been conditioned to champion just are not conducive to the very lives that they affect. So today we have millions of young gay black men walking this earth, beautifully designed as is, not only to face ridicule from a larger society, but to come home to a mirroring image of what society perceives them to be. Now I ask you again, when looking at the data, do we look at these things? Working in public health, I've met so many amazing people that brought so much joy to my life. Many of these people have been impacted by the stigma, minority stress, and health disparities that we just talked about. But while thinking about everyone that I've met, one person sticks out to me the most. His name is Terrell. Terrell grew up in Oak Creek, Wisconsin, a suburban city outside of Milwaukee, just about 25 minutes away from here. When getting to know Terrell, he told me about his story of his younger years and how he didn't feel safe and comfortable in his classrooms. From being teased in school to being called a sissy at home, Terrell just didn't feel like he belonged anywhere. Then Terrell started telling me about a story about how his adult years evolved and how he navigated through dropping out of school, losing his job, his car, and battling the then toxic cycles of a relationship. I remember thinking to myself, how is this young 27-year-old man so resilient after all his turmoil? But then it got to the point of his experience that I was not expecting. After Terrell got out of his toxic relationship, he went to his doctor to talk about a pill called PrEP. PrEP, short for pre-exposure prophylaxis, is a pill that people without living with HIV take once a day to prevent them from contracting the virus. Terrell said all he did was have to go to his doctor and have an important conversation about the pills for him and do some simple blood work. But I just couldn't believe that there was actually a pill this effective at protecting people from contracting HIV. That's when Terrell found out something that would change his life forever. Terrell waited a couple days to get his lab results and the doctor called and said that everything was negative except for one thing. Terrell tested positive for HIV. As I watched Terrell spiral down a deep depression, he told me that a lot of things contributed to his outcome. HIV stigma played a huge role in how Terrell felt about having important conversations about getting tested and safe sex with his partner. He also felt like other factors like lack of inclusive sexual education due to minority stress, living out of survival due to health disparities all played a role in this outcome. That was the last of bad news for Terrell. See, Terrell started working for a community-based organization that focuses on equity and health for same gender loving men of color just like him. Here is where Terrell learned about personal and professional development while learning of many safe sex interventions. It became a place for Terrell to be himself, a place for guidance, a place to be alive and whole. Those words since that day have been engraved in my heart to be alive and whole. Well, today, I'm alive and whole standing in front of you all, not only because I know Terrell, because I am Terrell. My name is Stacy Terrell Clark, and I'm only human, just like you. But it always didn't feel this way. One day, around the time of my diagnosis, I was visiting my mom. And she could tell that my morale was at an all-time low due to my recent diagnosis. So she told me to go outside and ask me what I felt. I said, Mama, I don't feel anything standing out here in 10 degree weather with snow on the ground. Then she told me to close my eyes and feel the small gusts of wind and asked me if I felt weak. Of course, I said yes, because at that point I felt like I had nothing left. But then she said something that would eventually turn my pain into my purpose. She said, baby, that wind is like your strength. Just because you don't see it does not mean it doesn't exist. Have faith. With that faith, I am now in a position to provide so many same gender loving men of color with opportunities that I did not have. But I can't do this work alone. How many of you have heard of the butterfly effect? This theory suggests that with a change as small as a grain of sand that you could create change in a different part of the world. 
The example best used is when a butterfly flaps its wings, it creates a natural disaster on the other side of the world. And when I thought to myself, this is the craziest thing I ever heard in my life. Who would actually believe that when a butterfly flaps their wings in Kansas, they would create a hurricane all the way in the Atlantic Ocean? Just from flapping its wings? So you know what I started doing? I waited. I continued to wait. Then it all came so simple and small to me. Me being intentional in how I respond to stigma was me flapping my wings. Me educating my family and friends of the true facts about HIV is me flapping my wings. And well, what I'm doing here in front of all of you today, well, I'm flapping my wings. Only to know that somewhere, somehow, someone is receiving this information that they would not have received. That's the power that we all have. You don't have to be living with HIV to fight the fixed notions of stigma, suppress the actions of minority stress, or alleviate health disparities for same gender loving men of color. In this world, little by little, we create the change that we want to see. So in this moment, right now, being man or woman, cisgendered or transgendered, gay or straight, black, white, or brown, you have the ability to either fan the flame of stigma or quench the flame. So I ask, will you flap your wings with us? Because HIV is not just the issue for some, it's your issue too. In fact, when we look at the root of the acronym SMH, we see how communities treat and see people who are living with HIV. And so we say in solitude, with the many shades of us, I am strong. I am resilient. I am human. So will you join us? Will you flap your wings? Because HIV is your issue too. Thank you.